Welcome. So what I'm going to do is show you how to solve this system of equations by applying substitution. And again, my theme that I've talked about when applying substitution is we need to have a variable isolated or we need to isolate a variable in one of our equations. And to do that, we always want to look at what variable has a coefficient of 1 or negative 1 if we don't already have a variable isolated. Well, I don't have a variable that's isolated so far, so I need to find the variable that has a coefficient of 1 or 2. And that's going to be the easiest one for me to isolate to be able to apply substitution. So my first equation, neither of my variables have a coefficient of 1 or negative 1. But in my second equation, I notice that the y in this equation has a coefficient of 1. So therefore, that's the equation I'm going to use to isolate the variable y. And I'm not going to want to isolate the variable x because it's just going to take extra steps. You can. You can isolate any variable. It just takes extra steps. So it's always nice when applying substitution to use the variable when it has a coefficient of 1 or negative 1, because all I need to do to isolate this is to undo the subtracting of 2x. So I do that by adding 2x on both sides. And now I have a variable isolated, which is 2x minus 5. So now what I do is I rewrite this second equation with, as my new equation with the variable isolated. So I have y equals 2x minus 5. So now. Uh, now what I'm going to do is plug in the value of my equation y into my other variable y into the second equation. So I'll rewrite this as 6x minus 3, not times y, but what the value of y is from our other equation, which is 2x minus 5 equals 15. So therefore, now by applying, uh, now by applying my distributive property, I get 6x minus 6x plus 15 equals 15. Well, 6x minus 6x is just going to be 0x, which is just 0. And then I have 15 equals 15. Now, I don't have a value of x, right? So I can't say that x equals this value. However, my final equation says 15 equals 15, which is true, which is always going to be true. And therefore, um, this, what this means is we have infinite many solutions. And there's a couple different ways we could also do this. I could put the x's on both sides. And if I solve for x, I'd get x equals x, which means it doesn't matter what my value is x. It's going to be true for all values of x, meaning these are exactly the same equations. And if I was going to look at this graphically, they'd be exactly the same line. So the type of solution, I don't just have one solution for x and for y. This has infinite many solutions. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you solve infinite many solutions by using the substitution method. Thanks.